So happy to see you, pal. Welcome to another edition of Hats Off to Mrs. Tipsy. Have you ever known anyone named Billy? Not just someone named William, but someone who actually went by Billy. I have known two Billies. They were called Billy Ray and Billy Cush. Here is another fun Billy for us all to know. His name is Billy Pie. Yay. Ding a dong 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 Billy Pie. Pie was a stupid little kid with stupid little dreams. One day he decided to skip school and go to the movies. He had never been to a movie theater before. It was the first time he was ever alone with a patch of darkness larger than his mother. Pie had no money, so he snuck in past the ticket taker and went into the first patch of darkness he could find. The movie was already playing. On screen, a man with a weird mole on his face was about to be eaten by a giant worm. Pie was mesmerized. The worm was huge and made of flesh. It had eyes and a mouth and a tongue. It was alive. The worm came at the man, and the man punched it in the face. The worm screamed and curled up in a corner to cry. The man suddenly grew concerned and asked the worm what was wrong. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, it was probably me. I can't control my anger sometimes. The worm whimpered and curled back up into a ball. The man looked at Pi. He was wide-eyed and wide and doing his own curling-up job in a seat in the fifth row. Come here. Pi walked up to the man and took his hand. The man led Pi out of the movie and to a motel room. There he gave Pi some white powder and a pill. Take this. Pi took the pill and swallowed it. He asked what it was. It's called speed. It's very powerful. It will make you feel as if you're part of the whole universe. It will make you feel connected to everything. It will make you feel like you're the only person in the world. It's not a big deal. Just do a little bit. Pi did a little bit. He did not feel connected to the universe. He felt terrible. Hey, that's not so bad. Just a little bit more. Pi did a little bit more. Yeah, this kind of rocks. What's your name? Your name is Carl. I'm not Carl. Oh, okay, I'm not Carl either. I'm Billy, Billy Pie. My name is Billy Pie. I'm Pie, Billy Pie, Billy Pie. I'm Pie, and you're Carl, you're Carl, you're Carl. The man sat in a chair. He had his hand in his mouth. He looked like he was going to cry. I'm not Carl. I'm the worm, and you're the man. I'm going to eat you. The worm climbed out of the un-Carl man's mouth, his body pulsing like suspicion in a centrifuge. I'm the worm! And you are my Billy Pie, all fresh and cooling on the windowsill of this motel chair. The worm took a bite out of the back of the chair. Pie panicked. He had no idea how to escape from the motel room. Y'all need any housekeeping? No! Get out! Don't bring drama down on us. We're in a motel room. Nothing to see. Go away. Please wait. Help. I don't want to be here anymore. And so the housekeeper whipped out a dimensional vacuum gun and pointed it at Billy Pie. The worm lunged at Billy's feet just as the kid was getting sucked through the air. But the housekeeping lady shut the vacuum off as soon as Billy Pie's shoes passed the lip of the mouth of the dimensional vacuum musket. Oh, I was going to eat that. Well, too bad. I have a special place in my heart for scared children in motel rooms about to be eaten by giant worms. I'm not that giant, am I? You're no earthworm, baby. We all have crop circles on our heads. I have two crop circles on my head, so I just cover mine up with a witch hat. I don't have a witch hat. Well, everybody's got a witch hat somewhere. 
The many ions of Billy Pie were wrangled in a violet vortex until his atoms reassembled on a dusty street corner in an unknown world. Whoa! I don't know this world! Hey, look. A kid. Oh, I've seen better. Have you seen better than me? Don't turn this into a you thing, Gory. Hi! Do you know where I am, please? Sure, kid. You're on the corner of Holly Weird and Vampine. Smack dab in the center of Boo Bank. Like Hollywood and Vine? I know where that is, but that's in Hollywood, not Burbank. I don't know what to tell you, kid. You're pronouncing our place names all stupid. He's a stupid little kid. Bet you have stupid little dreams, don't you, stupid little kid? I was wondering why his hair seems so flat. What do you mean by that, flat? Bet he doesn't have any crop circles in it at all. Hey, yeah, let us see your head, kid. Let us see! Man, he is stupid. Hey, I just narrowly escaped a giant worm that came out of a man's face! He just escaped a giant worm that came out of a man's face. Narrowly, I hear. And it wanted to eat your face? Well, probably. Well, good times come and go. It was around this time that James Dean, or a relative facsimile, shot out of a big cloud and smashed into the pavement right next to where Billy Pie was standing. Whoa, man! Don't hurt yourself, Billy. He looks so peaceful, like the world was made for him. Made for him to splat into. Yikers! Does that happen a lot around here? As if. Do you see a bunch of other people squashed into the ground? Yes! Well, it's not like an every minute kind of thing. I want to go home! I'm supposed to be in school! So do I, kid. We're all in the same boat. Oh, hey, a worm's starting to grow out of your chest. Is that the worm you were talking about? <coughs> it was the very worm that had come out of Not Carl's very face, now emerging out of Billy Pie's own chest. Billy Pie did not feel any pain from this occurrence, but it was still plenty distressing and weird. I think it might be. I don't like this! Hang on, I think I still have some spell points for the day. Don't forget you ate some salt and vinegar chips. Oh, yeah! A steady yellow beam drew through the air from the finger of the person wearing a witch hat all the way over to Billy Pie's chest. It enveloped the emerging chest worm and ceased the worm's chest emergence. Billy Pie continued to scream, but that did little to help the worm disappear from existence entirely. That was all thanks to the yellow beam stuff. Wow, it's gone! So am I. Magic makes me poop. Excuse me a moment. Wow, thanks a lot. Now if I can only get home again. Yeah. <laughs> that's something that's never going to happen. You should just find a place to stay before the panicoids come out again. Panicoids? What's that? As if, just to illustrate Gory's words, a wave of wheat-like creatures and corn beings spilled out of the shadows between the buildings that made up the surrounding cityscape. Those. Corn creatures! What's happening? Oh, the panicoids? Yeah, they suck. Oh, are you done pooping? Did you want to see if we can catch a movie or something? Ah! What do I do? Where do I go? I don't know. What's playing now? Oh. I think anything, anywhere, whenever, but I've already seen it. And I'm already going to see it. Please help me! Oh, I'm out of magic. Oh, Cab Walker's supposed to be good. I'm too gritty. I want something happy. A switchgrass man swiped at Billy Pie with its long, sticky brush. Oh, it almost got me! Let's just go, you know? Yeah, it's insufferable. Seeing that the witch-hatted person and its companion were ignoring him now, Billy Pie ran between zipping carriages and falling James dean likes A four-legged sorghum beast leapt toward him, and he dove under a lowering garage door just in time. Alas, we must leave him here for now. What? 
He will find a place to sleep for the night and be safe from the groaning panacoids outside until morning. After that, who knows? We do, and we'll let you know some other time. Oh, that's just great! Billy, 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 Here's another Billy. He's Billy Cream. Mm, you best look out, Ron Twiggerham. If Billy Cream catches you messing with his hair product, he gonna pound you. I don't care about no Billy Cream. He'll trip on his hair if he tries to chase me anywhere. Besides, he won't notice if a little hair cream is missing. Yeah, right. Billy Cream will know if you even looked at his products. Oh, here it comes now. Hide! I'll be right there, Joni. I just gotta check on something. Hey, somebody's been in here. Who would be in here where my hair care products are? Um, ain't nobody in here now. How you doing, babies? I missed you. Baby, I come in a lot! I said I'll be there in a minute, all right? I just gotta take care of something. Jeez. Can a guy say hello to his hair care products? Hey, what's this? My bottle of smooth tips is open. Who deflowered you, darling? It'll be all right. Oh, shh, 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 shh. Daddy Cream's got you now. Well, there's no need to... What was that? Huh? Hello? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Hello? Oh, what was that? Hello? Is there somebody in here? If you mess with my smooth tips, I'm gonna cut your motherfucking throat open! Now who's in here? I'm sorry, it was Ronald! Can you read it now? Ronald Twiggingham? Your hair is perfect. Why are you touching my creams? I just wanted smooth tips. <laughs> well, damn, Ronald. If you want smooth tips, you don't need to steal mine. You can get your own at any participating hair salon. Participating in what? In selling smooth tips, stupid. <sighs> Only twenty four ninety nine while supplies last. God damn it, Billy Queen! If you're not gonna take me to the disco, I'm gonna find someone else! Bitch, I told you once! You don't tell me nothing, Billy Queen! I tell you once! Bitch, I told you twice! You ain't got nothing to tell, Billy Queen! I'm the one telling you, let me tell you! Bitch, I told you thrice! William Michael Cream! I know you are trying to act tough on front of you! I know you were trying to act tough in front of your friends, but if you call me a bitch again, I will shave your head while you sleep. So help me. You wouldn't. Try me. And that's when the airstrike hit, killing nearly everyone in town except for me and your grandmother. Wow, the 80s were fucked up, Gramps. Hey, bitch, where's that turkey? Is he talking to me? You're the only bitch I see around here. Oh. So where's that turkey, bitch? I just checked on it. It's almost ready. Bitch, I'm starving. I know my name is Bitch, but I don't feel like you're using it with good intentions. I'll show you my intentions, Bitch. Serve that turkey. 
Okay, let me get the oven mitts. Hey, Gramps, I was wondering. Yeah, little Dum Dum, what is it? Well, I know that an airstrike killed everyone in town, but... Yeah, a little dum-dum. Well, what about the smooth tips? The what? The hair cream. Did it get blown up too? I suppose it did, little dum-dum. Aww. Turkey's on the table! Gather round, bitches, and I will tell you all about what it felt like to live through the airstrike. Nana, you got a storytelling turkey. I don't know. I followed the instructions from the internet. The day was like any other in 1983, until the sky was filled with dark metal ostriches. Whoa, down! Look, babe! Pooping on us! Don't try to change the subject, Billy Green! You call me a bitch and I'm not giving you any! Anyone? Any of my pee! Ew, babe! I don't want your pee! You're getting me mixed up with that Tuffelman. Not that pee, dumbass! Ew, you called me a name! I'm not giving you any of my pee! I don't want your pee because you called me a bee! Whoa! Whoa! That's a powerful poo! I had Taco Bell for lunch! <laughs> what? But the mutants came and ate all of my bread. Alright, that's enough! Oh, Grandpa is overstimulated! You kids get back home! I never got to tell them about the time I had sex with Jimmy Chase. <laughs> oh, turkey! You edible bitch! I think that's it for the billies. I don't think I can take another billy right now. I have had so many billies lately. Like to... to hold billies. Enough with the billies. I don't even want to hear the name anymore. Is it even a name? The word. Billy. Ugh. Oh dear. Oh my dearie me. Witches. Have you ever known a witch? I have known two witches in my life. Witch Ray and Witch Kush. Here is another witch for us all to know. Witch Pie. I bring forth Anul Beth Gilsh for the crime of witchcraft. What did she do with her craft? She turned Goody Tinkleton's donkey inside out. Did you bring the donkey? Wheel in the donkey. Oh, it stinks! And it looks hideous! Get it out! It was a couple weeks ago. She also vexed me. Mm, these are terrible crimes. We must put her on trial. The accused has representation. Representation? You mean she has a lawyer? That's right. Your Honor. Who are you? I am Satong, Your Honor. I am here to defend Annabeth's accusations. Mm, this is rather unusual. I have here the bylaws of the town charter, and it clearly states 
that whosoever be accused of committing most heinous crimes shall be entitled to representation in unto witchcraft and womanly uppititude. Yes, of course. The dictionary defines witchcraft as the art and practices of a witch. Annal Beth, are you a witch? No. <laughs> then by definition, none of your deeds can be witchcraft. Oh, um, <clears throat> yes, so sorry. Hey, um, I claim that she is a witch. Oh, this is getting interesting. Do you have proof? I have the donkey. Do you want me to bring it out again? No, that won't be necessary. There's a lot of letters in that word. Yeah. I demand that we do a full autopsy of the donkey. Sure. Sure. Um, how? Oh, there's no forensic science yet. I don't think... What? (laughs) Sorry. I experience time differently. How does one go about establishing witchiness? If she is a witch, then she has made a contract with Satan. Who? Satan. Right. Being so in league with the Prince of Darkness, the witch will have likely known the devil intimately, and he shall have left his mark upon her body. And what kind of mark? The mark of McKinney? The... <laughs> Sorry. The mark McKinney of the beast. Okay. The mark of the beast comes in many varieties. Tattoos, burn marks, scars, warts, birthmarks, Age spots, freckles, and absence of marks. Um. Excellent. Well, as in all good science experiments, we will need a control subject. Do we have anyone here of whom we are certain to not practice any witchiness? Oh, yes. Let me look. Hmm. There's so many good people here. I'm sure they all are free from being a witch. Why do you need this? We must strip them down and show the body of a non-witch to compare to the accused. Oh, so we will have to examine the entire body? Hmm, of course... Good wife, Busty, please step forward and remove your clothes. Um, I never wear any fucking clothes, and you know that, Grover. When we're in court, you refer to me as your honor. What the fuck is a court? You told all these people to come into Bumper Aloysius's barn. I was still trying to sleep. It's a court right now. Well, it's my fuck palace when the sun goes down. So all y'all better clear out. It's eleven o'clock in the morning. Well, what the fuck ever. I'm going back to sleep. 
You all can inspect whatever. Could you roll over on your back? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, now spread your legs a little. Dirty old man. All right, we see her. Now what? Simple. We must compare. Annabeth, remove your clothing and lie next to Goody Booby in a similar position so that we might compare the devil's marks. Dare thee strip thine witch cloths near my being. Silence, Goody Booby. We must inspect her. Then I shall withdraw my body from the premises. I should say so. Now, no more interruptions. Your honor. Yes, yes, take off your bonnet. Your honor. What? Good wife Busty is gone. We shall need someone to compare to. Are there any other proven to know be in league with Satine? Right? Satine, was it? Satan. Oh, right, silly me. Do we have anyone that we might compare womanly bodies with? Yes, good wife, Boosty. But she just disappeared. No, that was good wife, Booby. Why are you confused? Well, their names were so similar, and the features, because mm. I can see really well with my eyes. Yes, yes, they are. Such nice features. All right, ladies. Lie naked next to each other. You're being gross, dude. Stop it. I'm sorry. I want to be a better person. Well, just think about how many, just think about how you would like to be treated and treat others that way. I always wanted to be respected for who I really am and be accepted and loved by others. Then accept and love others and listen to them so you can respect who they are. Thank you, Satane. I will. Ha <laughs> ha Got you again? I'm Jesus, fools! I can't believe it. He, and then he just bounces out on his head like that. What a nerve that guy has. Oh well, let's stretch some necks. Such a shameful exhibition. We should be, and are, ashamed of ourselves. Locked within our nightmare art. We continue on. We drive ever onward into the rock, pittering and pattering with our daggers and hammers. For now we hammer into something bright and shiny. Oh, it is quite pretty, isn't it? Let us sell it to someone. Hi, I'm a prospector, and I just found this gold nugget on my land. Do I sell this to you? Well, I'm a banker, and I have money. Let me check the 1852 gold prices. Looks like it's about, oh, 12 bucks an ounce. Oh, I thought it was 1893. No, it's 1852, August 13th, 1852. I thought the price of gold were 1893. And I'm telling you it's 12 bucks. Do you want it or not? I must have heard the wrong information. I'm sorry. Let me hold on to this for now. Do you have a chart or something I can look at? Chart? Yeah, something written down where you have all this information. Dollars per ounce or anything like that. 
I, it's just 12 bucks. I don't know what to tell you. Hello? Hello? Where did he go? What is happening? There was a man here, and I was just talking to him. This is mighty strange. Sir! Sir! Are you back there somewhere? Nobody there. Probably one of them Canadians. What are you doing here? Hello! I just had this gold nugget that I found on my properties, and I came here to see if I could sell it. There was a man here just a moment ago, and we was talking for a while, but then he just vanished. A man? Where? A man. Here. He was behind this counter here, but there's no one there now. I don't know what happened. I'm not crazy. I know how this sounds. Do you? Yes. My vocal cords vibrates and produce sounds, and then that filters through your ear holes and into your brains. I guess you do. Well, do you want to sell that nugget? I did, but the price weren't right. Let me check the chart. I knew there was a chart! Of course there is. Weight, color, overall purity, 12 an ounce. Seriously? It's right here on the chart. This is just a napkin with the words 12 bucks written on it. Because that's the price. This bank is ridiculous. I need a drink. There's a bar across the way there. Thanks. Hello there. Welcome to my saloon. You! Yep. Uh, uh, me? Yes! No. I need a drink. You're gonna need to open an account. Can I get a pre-account drink? My head don't work no more. Well, half a shot of homeopathic liquor. I'll try anything. Mm, glop. That tastes like sugar water. You have to believe. Believe in the drink. Hey, Colin. What you doing? Pouring shots? I was giving this guy a shot of homo. <laughs> what? What guy? This man would like to open an account. I think that liquor has messed you up, Cole. I haven't had any. Excuse me? How can I open an account? You don't exist. Don't you start with me, motherfucker! <laughs> Excuse me! Can you help me? I came here from a weird vacuum cleaner. I just spent all night in the garage hiding from corn creatures and... Whoa! Chill out a minute, kid. What the hell are you talking about? I skipped school to go to the movies, but there was this man fighting a giant worm, and then he pulled me into the movie and took me to a motel, and... Bitch, be cool. You're talking madness. What, are you on speed or something? I was. I mean, he gave me some before the worm came out of his mouth and I got sucked into the cleaning lady's vacuum cleaner. I forget about this. Is anybody here going to buy my nugget? No. Fine. I'm going home then. And don't try to steal my gold neither. Because, well, I'll kill you, motherfuckers! Wait, you gotta help me! The weak things will come out again and I have nowhere to go! Sorry, kid. Ain't my problem. See you? But James Deans are falling from the sky! Finally, 
This bar is once more ghost free. Can you help me? We're gonna steal his gold though, right? Oh, totally. Meet me behind the blood barn at midnight. Anybody? Oh, Billy, whatever shall become of you? Perhaps we will never know. Or even more unfortunately, perhaps we shall. As for us now, we must dribble into the black again. Into the void. The black void known as Charlotte, North Carolina. So until we make it out again, bye bye my sweet lovely Billies.